Okay, so I'm back from Star Wars Celebration London and we've had some amazing announcements, a lot of which is ship related, so let's take a look. Okay, so first up we've got a new Imperial shuttlecraft, the Delta Class T3C shuttle. In keeping with the usual Greek naming convention for Imperial shuttles, we've had the new Lambda, Theta and Upsilon, and now we've got the Delta as well. The shuttle did briefly feature in the Rogue One trailer they showed us at the talk, but unfortunately that footage is not yet available. The design of this ship is really interesting. It looks like a hybrid of the Lambda and the Upsilon, and it kind of reminds me of Goa'uld designs from Stargate. It's interesting that Director Krennic doesn't just use a Theta or a Lambda shuttle like nearly every other official in the Empire. I wonder why he warrants a special design. One possible explanation is that the ship is a new prototype that only Krennic has access to, in his capacity as Director of Advanced Weapons Research. I also found confirmation that the TIE Striker is in fact capable of travelling in space, but its design purpose is for atmospheric combat. This makes a lot of sense, as the Empire would logically want an alternative to using their spacefaring fighters in every atmospheric battle, where their effectiveness would be diminished. This also provides an excellent reason as to why they weren't seen at any point in the original trilogy, since no major atmospheric battles took place. Another thing that I noticed while examining this poster was that the three TIE Strikers flanking this ATACT appear to have a different wing configuration to what we've seen in previous Striker images. These fighters appear to have a much flatter profile in their solar panels, with the canopy and engine housing hanging down beneath them. It's possible that the TIE Striker uses its normal configuration while travelling in space, and then shifts its panels to use its wings in atmosphere, allowing the ship to glide. Another thing I should mention is that after I uploaded my last Rogue One ship update, Space Dock follower Travis Magruder left a comment featuring this image from a long while back, which shows the U-Wing as a gunship troop transport, rather than a torpedo bomber, like the leaked promo seemed to imply. This has been further backed up by the celebration reel for Rogue One, which shows the interior of the U-Wing's troop compartment, as well as a door gunner on the ship, so good catch there Travis. Personally, I'm very happy to see the Alliance getting a gunship like this, it's gonna make for some really awesome scenes in the film, dropping troops onto the beaches of Scarif, and with the Battle of Scarif having been confirmed as the final Battlefront DLC, we'll presumably see the ship there too. Gone are the days of Battlefront devs being forced to give the Rebellion awkwardly repainted LAATs because there were simply no Alliance troop ships of the right size. Easily the biggest and most exciting announcement we got at Celebration was the return of Grand Admiral Thrawn to the Star Wars canon in the third season of the excellent Star Wars Rebels. This is seriously exciting news for fans of space combat in the Star Wars universe, and we can all rest assured that we'll get to see some classic out-of-the-box strategies and manoeuvres from Thrawn during Season 3. And with the simultaneous reveal of Wedge Antilles for Season 3, we'll likely get some great dogfighting scenes too. Another point that's gone unnoticed by many is this shot here where we can see what appear to be the markings of the 181st Imperial Fighter Wing, the TIE unit led by the legendary Baron of the Empire, Soontir Fell. I'm not sure we'll necessarily get to see Fell himself, at least not this season, but it's really awesome to see not only TIE interceptors in Rebels, but also interceptors from this legendary unit. Another thing from the trailer worth mentioning is this shot of a Corellian YT-2400 series freighter. Dave Filoni confirmed during the panel that this is not the Outrider, and we will not be seeing Dash Rendar. But frankly, with Thrawn and Wedge playing a major role this season, I'm quite content, and it's nice to see the design regardless. Okay, one final point here, I was lucky enough to be present for the Season 3 announcement, and those of us who were there were treated to seeing the first two episodes of Season 3, long before their release. I won't spoil any plot relevant information, but turn off now if you want to remain completely in the dark. The two-part episode chronicles an attempt by the Phoenix Cell to capture a squadron of BTL A4 Y-Wing bombers dating back to the Clone Wars. This represents the first time the Rebellion has come into possession of what would become one of their most recognisable craft. And toward the end of the episode, we hear that the Y-Wings are planned to be sent to General Jan de Donner's Rebel Cell for use in a special operation. This means that the Y-Wings seen in this episode could well be the ships that would go on to make up Gold Squadron and take part in the Battle of Yavin. It occurred to me that with Kian Farlander no longer being canon, the pilot and gunner of the single Y-Wing that survived Yavin have not been confirmed. With these Y-Wings now in the possession of the Rebellion, and Chopper's history confirmed as a navigator for a Republic Y-Wing during the Clone Wars, this Y-Wing could provide an opportunity for a Rebels crossover with A New Hope, allowing one or two of the Rebels characters to take part in the Battle of Yavin. Space Dock will continue to provide updates on more Star Wars ship information for upcoming content as it becomes available. Thanks for watching.